how to manage stress with yoga and breathing. This is the focus of today's class. This is an area very close to my heart because partly that's uh, what got me into yoga and that's a big part of my work. Most of the people I work with are people that are operating in high competitive env environments, usually corporate environments. And uh, it's stress that uh, often wears and tears their nervous system, potentially their physical body as well. But uh, today I will be giving you the tools uh, that uh, if you practice on a regular basis, uh, you can restore your body's energy. You can, uh, let's say, heal your nervous system. You can manage to alleviate some of the stress. But uh, before we start that, uh, I want to tell you one thing. That if mentally you don't become more resilient, stress uh, is always going to be a problem. And in order to become uh, mentally resilient, uh, you need uh, to see what is causing you the stress in a different angle. There are many exercises that I give uh, to my students uh, in order to change their perspective on stress. And uh, this is something that I am doing on a regular basis. Every time I see something as a challenge, every time I see something as negative, I have to review it and uh, renegotiate my approach to it. If I just see it as negative, potentially it could turn into something toxic. It will start eating me. But if I see that uh, as uh, its whole, and by whole I mean see its positive and the negative side, the reality is that we don't know what will be positive and negative because on the long run what we think as negative now may turn positive and the other way around. So unless I, I start seeing it as a whole, I will not be able to free myself of it. It might be something that I cannot get away from it. It might be something that a situation that I have to live maybe for the rest of my life. With this in mind, I'm going to be giving you one exercise which I suggest that you actually pause this video once I give you and you write it down. And I promise you that if you perform all these yoga poses that I will give you afterwards and the breathing exercises, having done this first exercise, which is just a simple exercise and one of the many that uh, I will um, potentially could give you because, as I said, I have a series of them, uh, you will be enjoying and you will be getting much more of the practice. So the exercise is the following. I would like you to write uh, on the top of the page, uh, and I suggest you handwrite uh, the problem that uh, is causing you stress. Now, if you have many problems causing you stress, I would suggest that uh, you write down the first thing that comes to your mind, or the biggest one. And uh, I would like you to start writing down all the things that uh, you consider to be negative or uh, stressful around this situation. And once you have exhausted this list, and in, some, in many cases, in my experience, one needs to push him or herself to write everything that can be perceived as negative about this situation, I would like you to draw a line, and then next to it, start writing all the positive ones, all the opportunities that uh, you see, and it's a very personal thing, that we don't want you necessarily to discuss with anyone else about this situation. And I don't want you to stop, and that's something that I know that a lot of you will not complete, but that's why you will not get the most out of this exercise. You will not stop until you have equal number of positive and negatives. So I encourage you to write, to do that now, write down a piece of paper that what causes you stress, because I assume that you are watching this video because you are in a stressful situation, and then come back and continue watching it once you have completed it. I still think that though that you should perform this yoga exercises because when you're in a balanced position, you will be able, much mentally balanced position, you will be able to uh, replenish your um, nervous system and uh, eat your body's reserves. So, the first thing I would like you to do now that you have completed the, the exercise is uh, to start with the breathing uh, um, practice. I would like you to find the tall position and I strongly encourage you, no matter how tired you are, not to lie on your back, but stay upright. So you are staying upright, shoulders down, and uh, you want to close your eyes and start following your breath. I will insist on you closing your eyes. If you find it hard to close your eyes, feel free to shut the door, lock the door, switch off the lights, do whatever it takes, but keep your eyes closed. If you don't feel safe in the place that you are to close your eyes, you probably need more work, more support 
prior to that. And of course, there are things that you can do, but at the moment, with your eyes closed, I want you to start following your breath. And I want you to follow the volume of your breath and not worry at the moment for the length of the breath. And the, the volume of the breath might be high or low, but you have control over it. You can alter the volume of your breath. You can reduce the volume of your breath, and uh, I would like you to reduce it to the extent that it almost feels unnoticed. Now, you may be taught and uh, believe that uh, deep breaths are good breaths, deep breathing, which is a little bit of a vague term, to be honest, because what I find as deep breathing may be different from yours, but deep breathing, hard breathing, is good for us. I suggest you do the exact opposite. I would like you to shorten your breath. Now, I would not be surprised if in some of you, this causes a gentle amount of suffocation. But try to stay relaxed and stay in it. It's actually very good for you. But uh, if you don't feel any suffocation, great. I don't want you to bring that up. These are breathing specific exercises that we are not going to cover today. And with this soft breathing, I would like you to continue to follow your breath as you hear my voice. The breath gets longer and longer. And maybe you want to visualize your breath similar to the waves of the sea. Every inhalation is similar to the tide that uh, brings the, the sea closer to us. And every exhalation, uh, it moves the tide further away. And while the waves can be coming in and out, the tide can last a long time moving the sea in, in London and moving the sea away from you. You may want to see how slow can you make this tide, your breath tide. Are you still focusing on your breath? Are you still having your eyes closed? And are you able to relax some of your body's muscles. So this is the next thing we will be doing. While you continue to breathe in this fashion, I would like you to start scanning your body. And the way you would like to scan your body is very personal. Some people will enjoy scanning their body from uh, the bottom, head all the way to the toes, or the other way around. But there is also some people that like to bring their attention to parts of the body that uh, seek attention, as I say. So it might be an injury, it might be any part, another part that all of a sudden you want to focus on, and that's absolutely fine. And as you scan your different body parts, uh, you want to see, are you tense there? Can you relax this muscle group? And you continue to scan your body, the different parts of your body. You can also bring in the, the following visualization. You can bring in the visualization of your body feeling heavy. Imagine you are filled with mercury, which is quite heavy. So you are most immovable. Get very well supported from here. Or you may want to uh, uh, visualize that uh, you are covered underneath the sun, hot sun uh, in a beautiful beach. And again, while the sun is restricting you from moving, you feel very nurtured by the, uh, the, the soil. And uh, any minerals that are in the earth are coming into your body and replacing any deficit of minerals that you have. Over the next couple of minutes, I would like to slowly open your eyes. And I would like you, for the rest of the practice, to stay with the same breathing. I would like you to come into a kneeling position with uh, the hands in front of you, so a quadruped position. And if you have uh, uh, problems with your wrists, uh, you can always have uh, uh, some blocks or something supporting you and have your forearms on top. And I would like you to center your hips from side to side. And I would like you to lift your chest and round your back. And make these movements very gentle. A lot of the times in my yoga classes, I'm encouraging my students 
to bring your movements towards 100%. But that's not something that I suggest you do now. And from here, I would like you to sink your belly, come arch your back and move you, your body towards one side and round your back and move your body to the opposite side. So you're creating a circle. So again, you don't have to make the circles bigger, make them comfortable for you. And maybe you're allowing your shoulders to soften as you're doing that. And reverse the circles. Keeping your head heavy. When you're dropping your belly, you want to lift your head, but overall I would suggest that you keep your head heavy. And you lean forward, and then you lean backwards. And you lean forward, and maybe you want to hold here, and you lean backwards. Similar with uh, the pendulum of dealing with stress where we can uh, become obsessed with it, or get stuck with it, or we can distance ourselves from it. And now we'd like you to turn your fingers and have them pointing back towards you. And I would like you to do the same movement, you lean forward and backwards. And slowly you hear, you feel potentially here your forearm stretching. and uh, release. From there, coming back into the quadruped position, I would like you to bring uh, the left hand out and send the left shoulder towards the floor as you look away from your shoulder and coming back up. And one more time, keeping the elbow straight, you look away from your shoulder that's coming towards the floor. And you switch, you go to the second side, two times again on this side, bringing the arm out and bring the shoulder down. and release. From here, we're gonna go back to the first arm and we're gonna bring it through the body. And this time again, we are gonna bring the shoulder down towards the floor and come back up. And one more time, we're gonna bring the shoulder down towards the floor and come back up, second side. Arm through, shoulder down. And one more time. And release. For the next one, I would like you to lift one knee off the floor and bring the knee out and bring the leg up and back into neutral. And I would like you to make these circles comfortable for you, but big enough. Three, four, and five. And release and you do the same thing on the opposite side. You take the leg out and you make these circles. Think of creating these circles as big as possible with your knee. Four and five. And from here I would like you to tuck your toes under and sit back into the squat position. Have your heels off the floor and uh, Try to maintain your knees in line with your toes and your spine upright. Feel free to use support if you need for your hands. If you have sensitive knees, you may want to come a little bit higher, which potentially will recruit more your quads, but keep your knees safe. Spine straight. And from here, I would like you to lean to one side and to the other. And as I'm going to turn towards you, I would like you to move from side to side and see if you can get a little bit more of the stretch and for the adductors, the muscles of the inner thighs. And from here, we come now into a squat position and the feet will be a little bit wider than before. This pose is referred in yoga as malasana. And I would like you to place your hands in front of you and lift your hips up 
and then come back up in an upright position and hands down on the floor, lift your hips up as much as possible, try to maintain your spine straight as much as you can. And hopefully now with your hips a little bit more open, I would like you to come to a small lunge position, a gentle lunge position. Notice that most of the exercises that I, I've given you, I encourage you to stay within a comfortable range. Right, there are different types of yoga and uh, different approaches will work towards stress in some individuals. But I have found that even people that are very much attracted to pushing themselves, they may help themselves with stress, but usually stress keeps coming back. A lot of the times when we are dealing with stress, with stress is a matter of uh, moderating our response to any stimuli. And stress, stress, sorry, stress is a stimuli. So can we not go full on into it, full um, into our 100% range and moderate? And maybe this could have a reflection into how we deal with the stress. So if you are not in the 100% of, uh, of my range of, of a lens, but nonetheless I'm feeling the stress in the front of my right thigh. I want to be contracting my right glute and uh, the, the front foot can be underneath uh, your um, left knee or not. It doesn't matter here. So you don't have necessarily have to copy my position, just be in a gentle lunge where you're feeling the stress on the front of the back leg. Okay. Awesome, and I would like you to go to the second side. I want to elaborate a little bit on the point that I just made. So, if every time we are stressed, we are running towards a very nurturing, a very yin practice, or yin in general approach to it, so getting massages and getting spas, or we are running towards the other end where we are trying to do the most active, the most vigorous activities, either of which may be very useful and uh, may be part of the, the solution, but if that's all we do, it's probably the case that we are overreacting to it, whichever direction we are heading to. So here, again, similar with the first exercise that I gave you, I'm asking you to consider if we are having a controlled, a moderate approach to whatever stimuli you have. The stimuli in your life is probably coming from a professional or a personal uh, Stressor, here it is on a physical stressor, such as uh, stretching our body's muscles. And slowly from there, release. Notice that we're spending a lot of time almost close to the floor, a lot of time doing grounding poses, and it's not uh, a coincidence. From here, I would like you to come into a cross leg position. Now, if that's tight for you, if it's awkward for you, I would suggest you sit on blocks uh, if uh, you are happy with it. Have your feet together, knees apart, uh, and then you might slowly shift your weight forward. I don't have a bolster in front of you, but if you have pillows or bolsters or the edge of the bed, you may want to place your forehead there and from there slowly come forward. I am able to have uh, my uh, head resting on my feet. and slowly come out. This, by the way, is a position that if you find it coming, I suggest you spend more time, but I know that it's not for many people so calm, so you can move out. Next, uh, I will be asking you to go into downward facing dog. And if that's a challenging pose for you, I would be wanting you to come out of it uh, every whenever you want and making your way to child's pose. The child's pose that I suggest you practice is the one with knees against your ribs. So not this apart, and the reason is because that's how you will start working with the respiratory system. In this uh, um, video, I want us to work with breathing as well as uh, with uh, uh, yoga poses. So if you're coming out of, of downward dog, you have your knees to close together as much as possible and you place your forehead uh, in front of you. Of course, you can have 
your forehead on top of your wrist. Now, for those of you that are going to downward dog, you can place your hands as wide as your shoulders and uh, work your way into a downward facing dog. Keep the shoulder at the scapula elevation, keep the shoulders in external rotation, and from there I would like you to bend one knee and straighten the opposite. Take your time to hold its uh, position. Couple more breaths here. The next thing I would like you to do is send you your hips towards each side. And now you will be stretching your lats. So you are sending your hip towards the left, you're stretching the right side of your lats and you're sending the hips towards the other side to stretch the other side of your lats. Release. From there, rapid pose. You will be bringing your head, your forehead, I should say, very close to the knees, as much as possible, and you will tuck your toes under. So, from here, head close to the knees. You hold your feet and you roll forward. and uh, release. I would like you next to come into a cross leg seated position or lying down and I would like you to close your eyes and start holding your breath. And I would like you to try to slow down your breathing cycle. Imagine you're playing this game with yourself where you're trying to reduce your, your breath as much as possible. And I suggest you do that gradually because if you do that too quickly, you may find suffocating yourself. And from the moment that I will say start till the moment that I will say finish, I would like you to count the number of breaths that you take. So, when you inhale, exhale, it's a count of one. But of course, apart from the inhalation and exhalation, there might be some pauses. So, this would, its breathing cycle is a, a, one count. And then you will count how many times, how many breaths you've taken from the moment that I say start till the moment that I say finish. Let's start now. Try to stay focused on your breath and if at any point your mind drifts away, you can bring your attention back to your breath and continue to count from where you stop.
and you can stop counting now. At your own time, you can make your way back into a safe position if you're lying on your back. And uh, you may want to know how long you held your breath for. And uh, we held your breath for three minutes, which was not very long. Now, the question is, did you keep track of counting your breaths or you lost track? And if you did lose track, what does it tell about your attention? This is actually an exercise that I'm using to help people both slow down their breathing as well as improve their attention. And they have some progressions of it. But uh, if you manage to hold, your, to hold um, your attention into your breath, to keep track of the number of breaths that you took, then you can divide this uh, by three and find how many breaths you were taking per minute. I would not be surprised if some of you are surprised with how few breaths uh, you need to take in, and you are still fully alive, fully oxygenating your body. So, quite a few things addressed in this uh, session uh, about uh, tools uh, that you can use uh, to improve uh, your response to stress, to manage stress. And uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, the most important one is your approach to discretion. If you perceive that as something that will devastate you and uh, ultimately kill you, then uh, all the yoga poses in the world would not do as much as they could. However, if uh, mentally you have a more balanced approach towards stress, I think yoga can be a great complement and breathwork, of course, towards supporting your nervous system. My name is Anastas Zenis, I'm a yoga teacher and breathwork instructor based in North London. And as I said in the very beginning, I come from a very stressed background. I've been to the army, in the special forces, I've been in banking, I used to be a trader. I've paid my dues in stressful uh, places and uh, I know that stress is not a problem. Our approach to it is. And uh, I really hope that uh, from the exercises practice today, you will get uh, some help yourself. Feel free, free to reach out to me if you need uh, my help. And uh, if uh, you are um, new to this uh, um, YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe as uh, there are other um, material that potentially you will find the equally useful in yoga as well as breathwork. Take care.